Hi, welcome to the 6502 show. Today I've got two great packages of software that work really well when you're debugging programs or even writing some small programs in a 6502 single board computer like the PAL-1 or a MicroKim or a real Kim-1 if you're so lucky to have one. The first package is LittleBug. It's a collection of bits and pieces that I gathered and even a few modules I wrote myself to have some debugging tools in such a small environment. A lot of stuff that was already out there was just too big to be useful and fit into the small space, you know, the 4.5K that you have left over in a PAL-1. The other package is from the early 2000s by Alexi Eben. It's called Simon, or Come On. I think that's probably what he meant to call it. It was originally written for the unexpanded VIC-20. It works great in this environment. So let's go take a look first at LittleBug. <laughs> The first thing we're going to look at is a little package of tools that I put together from various sources on the internet or cobbled together myself. And it's called, ta-da, LittleBug. And as you can see, there's facility to copy memory from one place to another, to disassemble some assembly language. We can call the EWAS light monitor, which is the good old WASMON. And we can fill memory with a byte. We can dump memory and look at the ASCII, which is something that Wasmon doesn't do. We can print the registers, and we can also search for a series of bytes. And, of course, exit the program. Well, the first thing we should take a look at is uh, the EWAS light monitor. Now, it is invoked, you can tell, because the backslash is up there on the screen. That's all you get. It's all you ever got with the Apple One. So, very authentic. Let's take a look at what's in uh, page 2 to 2F. And there we go. That's what's there. Um, this is a pretty simple stuff. Uh, you can look at memory. You can write to memory. Here we're going to write to D0 and set up our next thing. But I really want to encourage you to go look at Ben Eater's video on the Wasmon. He recently posted it. There's a link in the description below to that. Well, let's get set up now to disassemble. Let's take a look at the disassembly of the start of page two. And we uh, wrote 0 and 2 in. And I happen to know that 1010 is the start of the disassembler, but we could have just gone back to the menu as well to have seen this disassembly. Uh, this is uh, the WAS bomb. There you go. Well, moving ahead. Let's take a look at uh, the facility to copy memory. So we're going to set up by copying uh, uh, 200 to 22F, and we're going to copy that onto the page 3. And we'll go back to the menu, B00, run it, and we will copy. And it's Move It by Lou Edwards from the first book of Kim. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So uh, we already set up our addresses. The reason that this has a little G starts it is because this is a destructive routine. So we want to make sure everything's right. Any other key would send you back to the menu. So we hit G, all OK. And we can check that move by jumping back to the EWAS light. And then we uh, can take a look at uh, page 3. Sure enough, there it is. Uh, next up. Let's take a look at the memory dump facility. We'll head back to the menu and we don't we could set up, but I'm just going to use uh, the 200 that happens to be in there already. So I just hit mem for go and this is page two and you get a whole page at a time. Regardless, that's what you're going to get. And there's a little bit of uh, ASCII readable stuff there, but uh, you can see that this would be handy if you've got data tables and things like that to look for in your machine language programs. Okay, next up we're going to look at the fill command. So we'll set up with that here and we will fill page three, I think. Shall we fill page three? 
Yeah, let's fill page three. And we're going to fill it with EA. And we'll go back to the menu after we set up for that. And we will select Fill, also a destructive program. So you've got the G prompt to start, and any other key sends you the menu. So we did it, and it did it. And to prove it, we shall go back to uh, Iwas Light, and we'll take a look at page three. And just to show there's a little bit above and a little bit below, we'll uh, put a few bytes here. But essentially, you have an entire page of no op. Yep, filled it right up. Now, this could be improved upon, of course. You could, you know, hack this and say, hey, I want to only do so many bytes of this, you know, at these locations. And feel free to do it. I mean, hey, have at it. Improve this. Make it your own. Do whatever you need to do. Well, the last thing we're going to do is set up for a search. Now, this search... Uh, we're going to look at the entire bit of low RAM in the PAL-1. We're going to search pages 2 through 13. And we're going to look for three bytes. And these bytes are 20, A0, and 1E, which are the uh, hex codes for JSR 1E AO, which is to print out a character on the uh, TTY. So we're all set up. We'll go back to the menu, and then we'll hit search. S for search, and this will show us every location that has that instruction. So you can search through your program for any string of bytes. It doesn't have to be um, mnemonics or code. It could be data, anything you want. Finally, you can exit the program by typing X. Anyway, very handy. Oh, forgot about that part. We can print the registers, too. Yay! Registers! Then we can exit out of the program. But this uh, loads, as you know, at B00. So that leaves quite a bit of room for your programs and everything and still have all of this debugging material ready to go. Next up, we've got Come On, which is a wonderful little program that has a functioning assembler in it and you can still have 2.5K left over in this really cool little monitor. Let's take a look. Well, first things first, let's uh, clear out the status register and then load at C100. And there's Come On Light for the VIC-20 by Alexi Eben. And yours truly from with the port. Well, let's put this little thing through its paces. Uh, first off, Let's uh, assemble a little bit of code, a little tiny program. Let's load the accumulator with a 43, which is the capital letter C. And we'll jump to the subroutine for TTY output. And then we'll just return from that. About as simple as it can get. All right, so now let's uh, take a look at our program with the disassembler. And it's going to spit out what it spits out. You only put in one parameter, and then you get 16 lines of code. If you wanted to see the next 16 lines, you would just put in a D again. So let's run our code. We go to 200, and, well, it printed out a C and came right back. Did exactly what it was supposed to do. Next up, we'll do a memory dump. And this spits out a full page. Again, no matter what, no matter what address you put in there, you're going to get a page worth of memory. There's our capital C up there, and you can see the code and the op codes for all the things that we put in. One of the things this disassembler doesn't have is it doesn't spit out the op codes. And that's one of the reasons why I like the uh, WASBOM disassembler better. The I command, as you can see, just spits out ASCII, uh, no hex. Now let's write some bytes into uh, some memory. Works very much like the Wasmon. You put an address in, and you put some bytes in. And, well, let's put these bytes in. Four, three, two, and one, and a seven, and a three. Take a look, see, at what we just did to ensure that they were written. And sure enough, 
There we are, DCBA73, at the address we specified. Registers, uh, you'll notice that there's no program counter. So, eh, you know, it's what it is. You know, what you're really getting here is the assembler. That's the big thing you're getting. And uh, the rest of it works really well. And then we exit out to the monitor. Well, that's about it for the 6502 show for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it and had a good time. If you did, please like the video. You can subscribe. And I'll have some more content coming out later on in the month. Until we see each other again, take care.